Well, a few years ago, the left-wing London Guardian newspaper called Sweden the most successful society the world has ever known. Ooh, that does sound like hyperbole. Certainly today it does. Sweden is being rocked by an influence you would never expect. The growth of radical Islam. Dale Hurd has this amazing story. Sweden's third largest city, Malmö, sits just across the water from Copenhagen, Denmark. To visitors, Malmö seems quiet, nice, maybe a little boring. In other words, quintessentially Swedish. But under the surface, Malmö has serious problems. On Saturday, when Israel played Sweden in a Davis Cup tennis match in Malmö, an estimated 6,000 leftists, Arabs, Muslims and anarchists protested the Israeli presence in the city, and many attacked police. Almost no fans were allowed inside to watch the tennis series because authorities feared disruptions or violence. Massive immigration has made Malmö today one quarter Muslim and stands to transform it into a Muslim majority city within just a few decades. One of the most popular baby names is not Sven, but Mohammed. Pork has been taken off some school menus. Want to learn to drive? Here's Malmer's own Jihad Driving School. And despite Malmer's usually placid appearance, this experiment in multiculturalism has not gone well. This is the Rosengard area of Malmer, a housing project where the radicalization and crime have exploded and fire and emergency workers will no longer enter without police protection. Immigrant unemployment in Rosengard is reported to be 70 percent. An immigrant-fueled crime wave affects one of every three Malmer families each year. The number of rapes has tripled in 20 years. And the crime wave has only accelerated a Swedish version of white flight from the city. Malmö has been so accommodating toward immigrant Muslims that a local Muslim politician and imam has even declared that the best Islamic state is Sweden. But don't ask Malmö's Jews to give the city the same glowing assessment. Jews who dare walk the streets wearing their yarmulkes risk being beaten up. And it's true. Jews cannot walk in the streets of Malmö and, and show that they're Jews. Lars Hedegaard lives across the water from Malmö in Copenhagen, where he was a columnist for one of Denmark's largest newspapers. He says peaceful pro-Israeli demonstrations in Malmö, like the ones during the Gaza war earlier this year, were met with rocks, bottles and pipe bombs from Arabs and leftists. I was there uh, for a demonstration, uh, a pro-Israeli demonstration, with about uh, four or five hundred uh, people, um, Jews, non-Jews, and I came over to, to cover it. The police allowed these, uh, say, a hundred uh, Palestinians or, and Arabs to shout and threaten and um, throw bombs and rockets at us. Uh, a homemade bomb landed about ten yards from me, went off with a big bang, and I thought, well, now the police, of course, is going to, uh, to jump these guys, get them out of the way. They didn't. Just let them stand there. I filmed the police chief and asked him why are they not reacting to this, why are they not doing anything and he simply answered it's their right according to the Swedish constitution to be there. We apparently did not have the same right because we were forced out of their zone. Swede Ted Ekaroff helped film the Arab left counter demonstrations. He saw Arabs throwing rocks at a 90 year old Holocaust survivor. Hopefully you can show some of the clips from our manifestation for Israel, which is always peaceful and always with a message of peace. And there's it's always the quite opposite death, hate and killing of Jews. And like all over the Western world, Arab and Muslim immigrants, along with some leftists and anarchists, have formed a political alliance against Israel and Jews. They demonstrate together, and in Sweden they vote together. Muslims and Arabs are a core constituency of the left. The immigrant issue is a big reason the right-wing Swedish Democrats are the fastest growing political party in the country. Matthias Carlsson is the Swedish Democrats' press secretary. In, in many parts of Sweden, people are, as I said, fed up, and, and they've been pushed too far, and they, they want to make a stand. But the Swedish Democrats, who stand for traditional Christian values and limits on immigration, have been stigmatized by the Swedish media as fascist and bigoted. Uh, the media has tried to portray us as uh, extremists, racists. We're almost inhuman. 
Eric Almquist, national youth leader for the Swedish Democrats, faces regular death threats and was almost killed recently in a left-wing knife attack. The multicultural system in Sweden has polarized the society. We have uh, an ethnic polarization, we have also a political polarization. Hedegaard says as Malmer goes, so goes Sweden. I think the best prediction is that Sweden will have a Muslim majority by 2049. So we know where that country is going. CBN News was unable to get a response from Malmer's mayor, Ilmar Repolu, but he told a Swedish publication he does not think anti-Semitism is greater in Malmer than in other Swedish cities and said that harassment of Jews is, quote, not good. CBN News asked a number of Malmer Jewish leaders to appear on camera to discuss anti-Semitism. They all declined, with one saying it would only make the situation worse. Dale heard CBN News in Malmer, Sweden. Thanks, Dale. I was in Stockholm last summer, and of course it's a very beautiful, very peaceful city, and Sweden is a peaceful country. They have been socialist, but now they're moving to a, a more democratic, less oppressive kind of tax regime. And to see this happening, the problem is Europe has given up its traditional Christian mooring. You look at the Swedish flag, that's a cross on that flag. And all the way throughout Scandinavia and other parts of uh, Europe, the cross was the symbol because it was a Christian. It was known as Christendom. Europe so-called old Europe, but now they have surrendered uh, their patrimony and they don't have anything to believe in and these Muslims are very fervent in their belief in jihad, radicalism and so forth and a small minority of radicals can take over a, a complacent majority and that's what's happening in country after country in Europe. Uh, it's a dangerous thing, but Terry, I, I, I worry, I, I shouldn't worry about it because it's in God's hands, but it's going to happen, and it's, it's, it's sad that the Swedes don't wake up. Well, it's, it's not just the Swedes, as you said. Yeah. It's many people, and you see this happening, and it ought to be a warning to us here in America, because mm -hmm. by the time you actually figure out Islam is not a peaceful religion, <laughs> it's too late. Well, you've got Great Britain, you've got France, you've got Germany, you've got Sweden, you've got these other countries, and uh, they've just got to say no to Islamic immigration. Just say no, we're not going to have any more of you. We've got all we can take and we're not going to give you any more freedoms. So you can have the freedoms of everybody else, but we're not going to carve out a special thing where you have Sharia law, where women have to wear head scarves, et cetera, et cetera. But anyhow, so far the, the Europeans haven't done it and it's to their sadness, their, their sorrow.